Hello, today I'm going to be talking about Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. This came out in 2017 and I'm surprised you haven't read it actually. What are you doing? So I heard about this book when it first came out um, because my lovely boyfriend went to university, it was a couple years behind, but same like debating society um, at Trinity College in Dublin. And I remember being like, this is such a fucking dumb name for a book. And it really aggravated me. I was like, I'm gonna hate this book based on what it's called. <laughs> Um, and then you get like towards the very fucking end of the book. Sorry for swearing so much. I just like have a lot of feelings. Um, and it kind of explains why it's called Conversations with Friends. And then after this paragraph, I was like, actually, that's a great name. Uh, so I'm just going to start this review by reading out that. Okay. Marianne saw us holding hands in college one day and said, you're back together. We shrugged. It was a relationship, but also not a relationship. Each of our gestures felt spontaneous. And if from the outside, we resembled a couple. That was an interesting coincidence for us. We developed a joke about it, which was meaningless to everyone, including ourselves. What is a friend? We would say humorously. What is a conversation? It's conversations with friends. <laughs> All right, so now we got that out of the way. Um, what's, what's the book about, Charlotte? Um, it is about four people. Our main character is called Frances. She is a 21 year old student um, in Dublin and her best friend slash ex-girlfriend, Bobby, um, who is the same. And they perform spoken word poetry together because they're just really cool. And then there is Melissa, who is a journalist, uh, like a, a writer and a photographer. Um, she's in her mid thirties and she's just very cool. And her husband, Nick, um, who is also in his mid thirties, is an actor. Um, and these two couples sort of meet on this, the spoken word scene. Um, and they, they fall into this, on, on the back cover it says menage à quatre but mostly it's about Frances having an affair with Nick. I was so drawn into this book I found it really hard to stop reading it. I think I read it in like two or three days because I just couldn't I, just, I don't know it just <laughs> really drew me in um, and it's the whole I mean if you're having a torrid love affair and then you're still hanging out with your the object of your affair's wife. That's pretty fucked. Um, and I needed to see how it all all blew up. But it's such a strange reading experience because these characters are so, they're so well characterized. Like I really feel like I know what each of their reactions would be to anything, but I kind of didn't like any of them. My main issues with the book were thinking too much about the authorial experience. I get really bothered in books when there's like a lot of intellectualism. There's like just lots of people talking about really clever shit um, because I think not necessarily, but often um, that's just the author trying to show off. And in a debut novel, almost definitely gonna be the author trying to show off. I'm gonna read you a little passage of this. She said that monogamy was based on a commitment model which served the needs of men in patrilineal societies by allowing them to pass property to their genetic offspring, traditionally facilitated by sexual entitlement to a wife. Non-monogamy could be based on an alternative model completely, Bobby said, something more like spontaneous consent. I don't know, I couldn't, when I flicked through it, I couldn't find a more wanky passage, but there are more wanky passages. At some point one of the side characters is talking about an essay he wrote and then Bobby was like you should have read Deleuze and it's like why are you mentioning fucking like media theorists in a like it's just I find it really hard to just be like no it's that the characters are wanky instead of being like it's because the author wanted to prove that they were really clever and that they'd read Deleuze like in this video I'm saying Deleuze really casually because I've read Deleuze look at me Look at me, aren't I like so clever? Anyway, so there's that. And then there's also the similar sort of like fantasist thing of a successful mid thirties man who actually kind of has it together. I mean, he doesn't, he's got depression, but he's, I don't know why anyone of, of that like life stage would be anywhere near initiating an affair with a 21 year old that genuinely doesn't have a lot to offer. And I think it is, some, it's the kind of thing that a young person wants to believe. Like I, I mean, I'm very happy in a relationship, but like, I like the idea of, of being found interesting by someone much older than me, because who doesn't? But that's just not, that's not how it works unless there are issues. <laughs> Like there's, it's very hard to dissemble that power dynamic and actually be 
like a functioning normal relationship. I've heard on the grapevine that um, the characters of Francis and Bobby are equivalent to who Sally Rooney thinks she is, Francis, and Bobby is who she thinks she is perceived by other people to be, which is just extraordinarily narcissistic, isn't it? I just really hate Francis because like, I think this is an issue with contemporary books. I remember mentioning a similar thing about, um, not Little Fires Everywhere, the other one, Everything I Never Told You by C Celeste Ng, Ng, Ng. Um, it's just like, everything will be solved if you just fucking talk to each other. And <laughs> Francis like, will just not reply to a really important message and then it won't be a problem? Or it will be a problem, but it won't, like, you can't just do that. You can't just not talk to people. And it just, her actions really frustrated me. I didn't, I didn't really write any notes for this video because I just wanted to like rant about it. But the thing is, I really liked it. <laughs> I don't want it to seem like I hated everything about this. I was just like slightly too aware of the subtext of everything that was going on. I'm happy that I'm straddling that line of being really frustrated with it and really enjoying it. Cause I think most people would kind of marmite this book and would either be like, it's really pretentious and dumb or be completely in love with it. Um, and I'm quite happily sitting, sitting in the middle of those, which is a, a nice place to be. Let me know if you've read it, what you thought of it. Um, <laughs> was I being a bit too vicious? Um, and if you haven't read it, has this made, has it made you want to read it? I doubt it, but you never know. You might, you might want this conflict in your life. You might want to see what I'm talking about. Um, they're the kind of characters that stay with me. Also, one point I mentioned before my battery runs out, there was a really good sex scene. <laughs> there was just one sex scene. You'll know, you know what it is if you've read it. There's one sex scene that's just very, very hot. And I really, I really like that. It genuinely turned me on. It was very good. There's a lot of kind of like tantalizing things in here. You know that moment when you're like in a group of people and then there's someone there that you have a thing for and then you realize over the course of the night or whatever that they have a thing for you as well. And it's like this secret, exciting, electric thing that exists um, and you, you have to see it play out. Like a good like third of this book was that feeling and I love that feeling. If I wasn't a staunch monogamist, um, I'd spend my life looking for that feeling because I think it's it's really fun um, and reading it is is like second best I guess. <laughs> I've, I've been kind of hysterical through this review I'm sorry I didn't even put the book back on the shelf there we are conversations with friends a much nicer cover than the the, the two jack chairs um, I think it's actually quite cool now. Comparing this to Normal People, which I read much earlier in the year, I feel like Normal People was a lot more mature and a lot more objective. So I think I'm only going to enjoy Sally Rooney's writings more the more she writes, which is nice. Okay, we're done. Goodbye.